If you were to call this assassin bug bloodthirsty, the bug would most likely say, huh, and your point is? Practically from the moment of birth, in a cave in southern Belize, the assassin bug has one mission, to suck another creature's blood. Take this newly hatched assassin bug baby called a nymph. To grow, the nymph must have the blood of a vertebrate. And so the nymph's first act after finding its legs is to go vertebrate hunting. A fish or reptile will do, but the nymph was born near a cave that is home for both fruit bats and vampire bats. This sleeping fruit bat will do nicely. The nymph can sense its victim's body heat. It punctures the bat's wingtip with its needle-like nose and then, heh, fill her up. Like a gasoline tanker truck filling with fuel, the nymph gorges itself. Its saliva acts as an anesthetic. The bat feels no pain. In another part of the cave, a vampire bat pup is in trouble. She slid down a cave wall, attracting some adult assassin bugs. The bugs have cornered the pup on a ledge and aim the blood-sucking siphons right at her. The pup can't fly yet, but she can use her forearms and legs to escape. The assassin bugs don't give up. They go after the pup. Maybe they should learn from their own nymphs. Getting a meal is so much easier when your prey is asleep. Focus up, one, two, three. Fabulous. Today is a very exciting day because today we are going to start putting our composition together. So you should have your colored paper 
And this paper is just poster board that we have pre-painted for you. Now because it's painted, if you try to erase on it, it's going to erase the color. So we don't want to erase the color. All eyes on the screen, so focus up one, two, three. So now you should have your composition. We've looked at our compositions, decided what that should look like. You're going to have that handy. You should have your insect ready to go. You know exactly what you want to do. You should have it drawn to the size that you want it. And you should have your plant drawn. You shouldn't have to, you don't worry about having it off the page right now. Right now you just need to have a full picture of your plant. So here's what we're going to do, and this is a handy little trick. I'm going to turn this over so I don't mess up my paper because remember, you don't get more than one of these. You only get one of these, so don't mess it up. So I'm going to turn it over so I'm not making marks on it. And this is the front of my composition, clearly. I'm going to turn this over. This is scrap, yes? All right. And I'm going to go over it. This is an ebony pencil. Pencils come in different hardnesses or softnesses, and this is a really soft pencil. It's an ebony pencil. It's my favorite kind of pencil to draw with because you can get a really dark, 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 dark color out of it. So I'm going to use a well-sharpened number two or a well-sharpened ebony pencil. I'm going to go over the back of this, and I'm going to make sure that I don't. If I go over it like that, that's not going to work. I want to make sure that I get all of that. So I'm going to have to hold it up to the light so I can see. Make sure that I get all of that on the back. If this doesn't work, two things are happening. One of two things is happening. Either you didn't put enough lead on the back, or you're not pressing hard enough on the front. Now I'm also going to need some tape for this, so that I don't move this around. Okay, I'm going to hold it up to the light, make sure that I got all of it. And I'm going to need masking tape. I don't want to use this kind of tape. I don't want to use the scotch tape because that will rip my paper. I want to use the masking tape. Alright, make sure I got all of my spaces. I need a little bit more up here. Alright, now I'm going to make this plant work several times on my paper. Remember you want to have diagonals have at least one spot going off the page. Diagonals and repetition. I'm going to take my tape and I'm going to put it on my clothes. Put it on my clothes so that some of the sticky stuff comes off. So it doesn't rip my paper. Because I only get one of these. And then I'm going to go over all of my lines. Go over my lines and make sure I'm very careful. Not to mess up. Okay, now I'm going to peek. I've got one side taped down. I'm going to peek. And there is my flower. Okay, now I'm going to reuse this flower again. I'm going to take the tape off now. I could do another one, same direction, or I could turn it over so I'm going to have a slightly different picture here. And I'm going to make this one at the top. Tape it on. And I've just gone over the lines on the other side with this ebony pencil. So I know that there's plenty of lead on the other side to transfer. And now I'm going to go back over it and this time I'm just going to do a rubbing making sure that I'm getting on there well enough you can do this with a number two pencil as well a number two pencil will work but this is a lot darker and I like this one better okay now this as long as you can see that flower that's fine because then you're just going to go over your edges again and straighten that up. So now I'm looking at my composition as I'm doing this, trying to figure out where everything goes. And on this composition, there's a flower going this way and another flower going that way. I'm going to come back and darken that in again. Now I'm having a little bit of a hard time figuring out 
where this goes when I turn it over. I can't see the rest of my composition. So I could take a pair of scissors and now like cut this a little bit closer so I can figure out where things are going. I figure out where things are going because I'm just confused. Alright. I'm going to make another one right there. Just go over that again. Now, I'm not sure if that lead's going to work a second time. It is. It's working a second time. Make sure that your flower goes off the page at least in one spot. Or your plant, you could be doing bamboo or some other plant that doesn't have a flower. Very nice. Now I've got them overlapping. Now I just need to decide which one is in front of the other one. And make my lines, my overlapping lines accordingly. And if I'm really comfortable with my plant, now I can go back and decide, okay, I really want to fill up a little bit more of this space with another leaf. I'm just going to bring that leaf up there however I want because now I just have a basic guideline of my composition. Then I'm going to, and I'm going to save all this stuff just in case there's a big problem because I, I brought these as my backup. Then I'm going to do the same thing to my bug. And I think on this bug, I would want to cut this out. I'm going to cut this out and do the same thing on the back, put the lead on the back, place it where I want it, and transfer it. Remembering to keep my negative space in the center, and I'm going to use, notice I used this one flower, and I got three flowers out of that one drawing. Okay? Do it! Be great! Be awesome!